Oh, thank you. I think that you got to cut out a little special niche for yourself. And uh, uh, if I were you in these briefings, which we'll be talking to, uh, to the editors, yes, mayors, and the rest of them, I, I'd get myself a little fresh approach like you did today and just say now, there are many things I'd like to add to what the president said and what the Secretary of State, Secretary of Defense, agriculture and economics. I'm interested in every one of those subjects. But uh, you've heard that, and I agree with what's been said. Yeah. But I uh, I made three trips to Asia this year, and uh, or this since I've been vice president. And uh, uh, this is a pretty uh, large block of people. This is where two-thirds of the world lives. Number two thirds of them. Mm -hmm. and then I'd take the Rusk line on the Hooks in the Philippines. Yeah. I'd move into Malaysia. And I'd move into the sixth largest nation uh, in the world. In yeah. yeah. Then I'd go into China, mm -hmm. uh, the largest one in the world, is 700. And just say, now if you think we've got troubles, mm -hmm. because we've lost 5,000 men. I think about 500,000 Indonesia is lost, and she's lost her communist system, mm -hmm. and uh, we've rescued it. Mm -hmm. Here's what they've lost in Malaya, and she's lost it, we've rescued that. Here's what the Philippines, and we've rescued that. And we're going to rescue South Vietnam, and the Chinese are in a bloodbath with each other. Yes, sir. Now, why are we raising so much hell crying when we have saved the world from communism? I just take that little approach, tying it on like you did this afternoon. That's what they don't hear, they never see, they can't draw themselves, and while we don't want to claim that we brought about the Indonesia thing, if we hadn't have given them the money we did, if we hadn't have supported the generals the way we did, yeah. if we hadn't have been to South Vietnam the way we were, uh, there wouldn't be any Sukarno demise. Yes. And uh, while you may not want to go quite that far, you can certainly say that uh, ones that are closest to it realize the danger. And we have saved Malaysia and Indonesia and the Philippines. And China is in a bloodbath. And uh, the North Vietnamese are running. Yep. Why in the hell we ought to be hollering paws or, or attacking our own men, you don't know. And now is the time to stand up and support our own men. And, Let's get you a little patriotic uh, yes, sir. Uh, one minute ending there, and I think you can really wrap it up good. Well, I thank you, Mr. President. That's what I'd like to do. I hesitate a little bit to, to inject myself in on this, uh, on these meetings. I would always wind it up uh, uh, just kind of like the ranking fella, and let me introduce you there at the end and, and uh, get you a time limitation. We all talk too long, every one of us. We ought to quit at four. The reason I didn't want you talking 115 was I was afraid that they would raise hell about us talking too long. Right. And I had already busted in and talked too long on highways, but I thought old Bo ought to get knocked out because they would have made a platform all afternoon. That's right. Problem. They had the agreement they were going to give us hell. Yeah. And, uh, uh, but uh, now on this thing, uh, are you going to be here Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday next week? Yes, sir. Uh, there are two extremely important things. We've got about seven or eight men that it's essential that we get to the Foreign Relations Committee. Now, Mansfield won't get them there. He won't even get there himself. Yeah. Got to get a hold of him about 9.30 and saying, Mike, now, the President is depending on you because you're his Latin American man. And you had this resolution back in Bogota uh, at least uh, two weeks before Eisenhower did. Yeah. He wants you down there to help more state charge so Fulbright can't just gut us. Yeah. Then you've got to try to appeal to a fellow like Simon. Yeah. Uh, not to. If you can't help us, uh, don't help the mayor. Uh, uh, I don't know that you can do a thing in the world with Gore. You ought to talk to Laos, you know, and tell him that we don't want Dominican Republic, and there are about five or six explosive spots, and we're not going to do a damn thing until they put up. Yep. We're going to say, they, they're going to say to me, well, you won't do anything except talk big. We're going to say, well, if you put up the Congress here, indicates it'll support us. Now, yep. we'll have to come back and justify the authorization, and we'll have to justify the appropriation. Uh -huh. Try to get that resolution through. Now, the yep. ones that are for us, red hot, are, I don't have a list, of well, but uh, Sparkman. Morrison Sparkman. 
Uh, and Aiken. No, Aiken is kind of uh, picayunish. We couldn't tell. we got to take the Democrats. We have Sparkman and Morris and Mansfield. Yeah. McCarthy, he's one time, he's with us. Clark. Yep. That's really five of them. Yep. Super strong with us is six. Aiken ought to be with us is seven. Case is, uh, hadn't quite committed himself, but he ought to be with us without any question. Eight. Uh-huh. That, there's one or two more. Well, Carlson ought to be with us. Yes, that's nine. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, uh, Williams, of course, is uh, another fellow on there. I don't know where he will stand. We got Dodd. He, he ought to be with us. You will, but I don't know whether you'll go and vote. I'll get him. You just got to. Yeah, I'll get him. There'll be no problem. Uh, I'll get Dodd. And then we've got uh, Frank Church. Well, he is. Uh, he's telling everybody he's got to be against us, and I don't want us to go help him or McGovern either. If you ever ask me to help that son of a bitch McGovern. <laughs> Mr. President, I want <laughs> He, he came down on the plane the other night. He's the one who gave out that statement that, that uh, didn't want us out there helping him. Well, I'm damn sure not going to be helping him. I'll tell you that. I want to be supporting whoever what Republican runs against him. Y'all tell him that. Just tell him that you grave digging your own damn grave. If you well, think you can be strong in South Dakota and the president weak, you're crazy. Well, I I know. It's that simple. Just say, if you haven't got sense enough to know that if you got a weak president in South Dakota, you're gone anyway. So you better make him look as good as you can. Of him well, he ought to have that much sense. There's no doubt about that. I'll be to get those votes there. You want those votes out of that? What's that... important is they likely Fulbright says he wants to put it over. Now Morris has told us today from New Haven that he is that the committee will dispose of the. That Carl Marcy says he will dispose of the space treaty in 15 minutes. Yeah. I won't. But yeah. if he doesn't, Morris says that he will move to lay it aside and proceed with the summit resolution. Yeah. But we need to get that passed by Wednesday anyway, and we need to get passed by a heavy vote. It won't do us any good to have a 32-31 vote. Now, it looks like to me about the best you can get. If you work like hell, it'll be 10 to 5, but I hope it won't be any worse than that. Uh, then uh, we've got the second thing, investment credit. The House has already passed it. Uh, they cost us five or $600 million by dating it back to last October. But we don't want any other amendment. We don't want it to have to go back to the House because it'll get in trouble. Now, Long's gone off to politics. He's left it with Smathers. Every lobbyist in the country is working on Smathers. Yeah. Smathers advised us today that he'll have hearings Monday and executive session Tuesday, and he'll report the bill on Tuesday. Uh, Mansfield says that he'll take it up on Wednesday, but they always slip a day, so you just see they don't slip. All right. So Mansfield, please don't leave until he gets those two bills passed. The reason, then, nobody's spending a dime until they see what happens to investment credit. Right, right. A little depression. Well, I'll clean my calendar, any appointments I have on Mondays and Tuesdays here, just to spend full time on those committees. Those are just two things that keep them where they don't have to go back to the House. Yes, sir. The House has reported the resolution like we want it. If the Senate will just sum it, we've given them the amendment. If they'll just report Morse's resolution, Morse Hickenlooper. Mm -hmm. You can't take Morse and Hickenlooper and pass something up there. We're in a hell of a shape. That, that's for sure. What time do you expect to get back from Guam? Oh, I don't know. Wednesday, I guess, or Thursday. I'm yep. not sure. Well, take a little time. Don't hurry yourself too much. Don't tell your damn staff, because it'll be like a Democratic Party. They'd give more interviews. But here's what we want when we get the message back. Taking account of your comments in the light of further consideration, we have concluded the Vice President's trip within time frame March 27th to April 8th. Mm -hmm. He laid on, if at all possible, on the basis of the itinerary set forth below. Mm -hmm. Request, you are requested to consult the host governments in order to determine whether a visit this time would be acceptable, having in view a public announcement of the trip as early as possible. Mm -hmm. Upon the view the fact that universities will be closed, we'd like you to arrange other suitable forms for major speech in the Federal Republic, having in mind considerations referred to in the Lady Hildebrand telecon. Mm -hmm. We note that Van Fanny will not return until afternoon of March 30th. It is possible to schedule a meeting with Saragat and Moro on March 29th, with the Pope on the morning of March 30th, and with Van Fanny afternoon of March 30th. This should meet problem referred to in Rome 4811. Revised schedule, Monday, March 27th, daytime travel from Washington overnight to the Federal Republic. Mm -hmm. Arrive at Bonn, Tuesday, meeting, no business, Federal Government Republic, overnight in Rome. Wednesday, Rome, Rome overnight in Paris. Friday and Saturday in Paris. Sunday, Paris or London, rest. Monday, London, Tuesday, London. Wednesday, Bonn, Thursday, Bonn, Friday, Bonn, Saturday, Washington. 
Mm -hmm. Now, we have got an agreement uh, from uh, uh, the uh, uh, McCoy group. The, we're going to have to buy about 20 million more from the British. Yeah. We're going to move one division rotated, and they're going to move one brigade. But we've got the Germans signed on to buy our bonds, and we've got the, the British signed on. And uh, it looks like that we have prevented the dismantling of uh, NATO, and we're in good shape. Now, I think that there ought to be two or three things that you ought to do. The first thing I think you ought to do is get you a, a, a little chart and have them make it, have the Defense Department make it in red, white, and blue, and green and colors like they make their chart uh, that would show on a page 8 by 10 where you'd have a number of copies of it that mm -hmm. read all of the various pauses we've had and the reaction. Yeah. Right under the first pause, the first Bobby Kennedy pause. He came in April 22nd, urged it, May we put it on. We told him a week ahead of time. And the first day they pitched it back at us. We ought to show that. And then the second pause, we ought to show what that is, 37 days. They assured us it'd be 12 to 20 days. 15 to 20 day, it was 12 to 20. The Soviets put it on, they, they initiated with Mansfield, then with Fulbright, then with Morris, then with Clark, then with Bobby Kennedy, then with Mac Bundy, then with McNamara, then they all sold Rusk. I turned it down two or three times and finally went on with it. Had to go 37 days. Then the last call, six days. We told them way ahead of time when Ted was coming up, and we said to them directly, if you listen now and give us any indication Whatever. We will reciprocate anything you give us. But they said, no, 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 hell no, every time. Yep. Now, I think you ought to say that to every one of these leaders, and you ought to give them this chart. Yes, sir. You ought to give them the next chart and say, here's what the 17 nations did. Here's what the Indians did. Here's what the British did. Yes, sir. Just like we had there today. Only I get those in small size. Get an 8 by 10 and yep. leave it with them. Yep. And I might just take me one about half as big as his. About the size of my chart over there on inflation. Uh huh. Red, white, and blue. Uh huh. Now, take one on pauses and take one on uh, uh, peace initiatives. Uh huh. Instead of putting them all on one. Yep. And uh, get you one about, about a yard by about half as big as Russ, about the size of McNamara's. Yeah. In color. And you might take that on the plane so if you speak to any universities, yeah. that you can show it to them. Yeah. Just say, now, why is this such a one sided affair? Why does my president have to say to the 17 nations, yes, 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 and then wait a week and get denounced and then have them say no? Why does he have to say to the British Prime Minister at Kosygin, yes, and have them say no? Why does he have to say this, yes, and them no? Now, why in the hell don't you get Hanoi one time to say yes to anything and then come to us? Why do you always attack us and never attack them? Mm -hmm. The ones that obstructed, I just indict the living hell out of Hanoi. Yeah. Prosecute the living hell out of them. Yeah. Prosecute anybody else that, uh, that uh, won't make them. If they're interested in peace, by God, let them, uh, let them uh, deliver their client. Mm -hmm. I think it's a pretty good line to just say that uh, in your domestic speeches, uh, that uh, you said the other night when Bobby gave his fall, that some of you think that the administration against him, that we're not at all. Mm -hmm. Since he's such a peace-loving man, we wished it by God he would, it would stop his bombing for 37 days and just take, give us a pause for a little. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yes, sir. Mr. President, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, the areas that, you were, that you're figuring on, then you've listed here in your conversation with me, I mean, uh, uh, Europe. Oh, I'll just talk about anything I want to. The first thing I do is get the memorandum that... Yep. Uh, We'll get Monday. It ought, they ought to wrap up the European thing, and I would just know what's happened. Uh, what about yeah. what deal we made? Well, I have been quietly on my own, uh, without any uh, reference to even my wife, uh, uh, and doing something since you talked to me before. Uh, just uh, studying on uh, some of the matters over there that are of concern. I went even over to the State Department for a two-hour briefing here the other day in one of their sessions on Europe and the United Kingdom. Well, I'd take it and I'd look at all the cables that they've sent back and forth on this. I'd get all their advice. Then I'd try to get the ablest, best man that I could get around me yeah. to go so I'd have the best publicity. I'd try to uh, have the best uh, pub public relations people that you could get. I don't know. Uh, uh, 
I guess it'd be bad to ask somebody like Jim Haggerty to come back, but I'd get some people outside that are real good in this field, yeah. and uh, I'd get some advisors that I thought would be good for me, and I would uh, ask uh, the USIA people to see if there's anybody wants you to go and 